Hello, this is a video. It's a continuation of my videos on whack and all that stuff. And uh, I know you project finance people won't, won't watch it. That's okay. I don't care. But, oh no, another message. The, uh, uh, I want to talk to you about circularity in valuation. And here's a 62-page article. 62 pages on circularity and all this here let me show you all the let me do a control f and do a circularity here's uh, so you can solve the circularity with the iteration button circularity is generated circularity between whack value and the weighted average cost of capital circularity circularity problem circularity or whatever circularity circularity here Whack and circularity. Circularities because of K E. Uh, circularity, circularity, circularities. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm going to show you in a video that this is kind of all a bunch of crap. All right. Sorry, I'm a little arrogant about this stuff, perhaps. I've got a page called Valuation and Circularity. I want to show you exactly, like any other circularity problem what conditions the circularity actually arise. I want to show you, this is all related to the net of tax and gross of tax, uh, 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 the, 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 the tax shield on the interest. Tax shield on the interest. And if we use this all equity net of tax approach that's equivalent to the WAC, we can avoid the circularity completely. That's the first thing I'm going to show, and I might have to stop the video and then I'm going to show you, well, we should really figure out exactly what conditions cause circularity. And it's only when you have a company, when you've measured the beta on the unlevered uh, uh, sample, and then you start to reapply that into a leveraged beta with a new capital structure, and the whack is affected by the leverage, but the, 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 the whack causes the, changes the capital structure. And that only occurs when you have a tax rate. Without a tax rate, there's no problem. Without this putting a new capital structure and re-leveraging the beta, there's no problem. Okay, I know only when you have this kind of gross, you can avoid the whole thing. Or you can solve it with a nice little function, and then I'll show you. So, first thing I'm going to do is make a little example. Shift. Control C. Let's let's put. So for the first thing we'll do is compute the all equity beta. Now I didn't do my net of tax kind of adjustment. The video's a little bit out of order, but I just said okay, we can get some betas on all these companies that make seem to have a success by making people addicted to their stuff. All right, and or maybe a monopoly. So I got an average beta. That's from that other file that you can look in another sheet, you know, that tracks all the betas, or you can get the stock prices. And then so I said, well, okay, let's put an equity market risk premium and a risk-free rate, and we get an all-equity shift control P. Of that. Now, we go to a private company, and we say, okay, this company has a 40% tax rate. I know there's a race to the bottom. If you soon, there'll be much lower uh, corporate tax rates, probably. I've got to become a corporation then. I don't pay much taxes because I don't really own anything. Who cares? Then you have the market value of the debt. And we can take the net of tax value and realize that we really only have to pay off if we have a continually growing company that continues to refinance itself and the tax rate doesn't change, which might happen, then uh, the net value of the debt to us, our effective gearing is one by the tax rate. Now, here's what I do. I start with this net of tax capital structure, and I'm going to prove that the net of tax and the gross of tax capital structure give you the same result. And all we do here is with the gross of tax capital, uh, net of tax, we start with this one. And then we had the, the debt beta, and, and so I said, well, I 
is a risk-free rate, blah, 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 blah. And I, you know, I went nuts in another video. And this time, we're not going to make a tax adjustment. So our, our debt portion is this. And then we take the, well, we start with the equity and take, take this minus the debt is that. And then we get the equity uh, cost of capital as the equity rate divided by this. Okay, now that presupposes that we have a capital structure that, and we know what the equity is, which where is where the circularity seems to come from. Now let me, before we get into this more typical whack where you do it at the after-tax cost of capital, and let me show you something quickly. If I change the debt, make, make the debt zero, we get a different uh, number. If I make the debt 2,000, we again get a different whack. Uh, I'll have to go. That seemed to be a high whack. Okay, well, maybe I'll put 1,000 back here. Okay, that's what we started with. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to have to come back to that a little bit later. All right, um, the. Uh, if we just now, here's what I did. I said, okay, and why did this work? Just a minute. Hang on. Just just one second. Shift control C. I must have had like a, a little tiny character here that caused this to uh, happen in it with the shift control C. So let's put a no growth situation. We'll just start with 100. We have no growth, and then we have a terminal value, which takes this number, and of course, multiplies that by 1 plus the terminal growth rate, and divides that by, in this case, it's the all equity whack minus the terminal growth rate. So I'm going to put that kind of growth rate, and then we just press alternate equal here, and we get our valuation, and then our enterprise value is the net present value of this little cash flow stream that was not very interesting. And then in our uh, uh, net method, we take away the, the, the 600. Now, what in the heck did I just do here? Okay. Uh, that's, that was my problem. I must have uh, changed something. Okay. And then we get an equity value. No circularity at all. Zero circularity if you use the net of tax method. Now, let's use the same method and let's prove we get the same answer. Exactly, exactly, exactly the same answer if we inst put the regular nominal amount of the debt in the capital structure. And then here's the little problem. Get the cost of equity from the same place. Now, that means you would have had to compute the net of tax capital structure first. Sorry about that. And our uh, debt cost is 1 minus the, the tax rate. So our WAC from the, for the debt is, is, uh, is this. Shift the P for some stupid reason, and then we multiply this, and then we add these together to get the whack. All right, and uh, <laughs> and just a minute. Now I'm gonna for now put this here. We have to have the same number. And we get the same answer over over here for the equity. And I'm going to show you why we do. Notice the total amount in the in the denominator is different. So we get different percentages. This is this divided by this. And this is this divided by this. So in the net gross uh, capital structure, it looks like we have more gearing than we really have. But we, we're applying that to a lower uh, 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 um, cost. And we have higher debt applied to the higher cost, okay? And then we go and we use the, now, notice I use the different WAC. I use the WAC from up here, okay? 
this one, control B maybe, and control B. Those are two different wax. And I just showed you a minute ago that if we change the tax rate, the, the one at the top doesn't change. And if we change this to 1,500, then our whack changes and this doesn't. Now, if you use this whack and you have a tax rate, if there's no tax rate, this whole thing falls apart. Nothing, there's no problem. If you have a tax rate and you use this method to compute the, the, the value of the company, which we just put, take the NPV of all of the cash flows, if you do those two things and you subtract the, the, the gross amount of the debt, then you get the, the uh, uh, equity value. Okay? And uh, just let me pause it for one minute. Perhaps you saw me make a mistake on purpose. I just can't believe it. I've got to take some kind of pills to make sure I don't do this anymore. This, I made an error and that screwed up everything. So now when we take our WAC method, now I'm a little bit befuddled, but we take the NPV at the WAC and notice we get exact, no, we don't get the same enterprise value. Our enterprise value here is the one we did with all equity, but it adds in the, the tax shield amount on the debt. So then we take out the total nominal gross debt, and we get exactly the same equity value here and here. Ah, we got a proof. And then when we put that into the capital structure, guess what? Zero circularity problem. Zero circularity problem. You did not have to write a 62-page article. You have to understand things instead. God, this finance is... Now let's put a 5% growth rate and a 2% growth rate in, and let's see, uh, maybe it's all different because I have uh, growth rates. Okay, and we'll just look at that. And I got freaked out again. But look at this. The equity value is exactly the same, and that's what we care about is the equity value. If we want to put the enterprise value in this one, I suppose we could take this and add back in uh, plus the uh, value of tax shield. And look at this. No baloney. No crap. This one minus this one plus this, and we get the same value, exactly the same value, and there's no circularity, okay? Oh, looks like I got a call, and uh, I'm going to say au revoir, Matt, and all.